Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey, and here's a quick video on how to change sin machine values through code. So over here I have a simple first person controller. This is the official Unity start as controller that I covered in another video. And for the assets over here I'm using the Cinti office pack. There's a link if you want to get it. So I can look around, I can move around first person. And this controller is using sin machine to control the main camera. So over here I have a sin machine virtual camera. Now let's say I want to press a button and modify over here the vertical FOV. So I want to modify exactly this field. Now you might think of doing it just like you change pretty much any value. So let's make a script to do that. A new C sharp script, call it change sin machine code. Let's make a game object to run it and attach the script. Okay. So now here let's add a very simple serialized field. So we have our reference. So a serialized field of type sin machine virtual camera. So we need to add using sin machine. Now we can find of type sin machine virtual camera. Okay. Now here let's drag that reference. All right. Then let's do a simple update. And on update, let's test for a get key down. Let's say T key for testing. So when that happens, we go inside the sin machine virtual camera. And over here, like we saw, let's try modifying the vertical FOV. So if I search for FOV, nope, can't find it. Search for vertical something, nope. Search for field of view, and nope, nothing happens. So this is the tricky part due to how sin machine works. But thankfully, sin machine also comes with all of the source code. So we can inspect the virtual camera script to see how it all works. And the method that I'm going to show here can be used to find any field you want to change in any package. So over here on the sin machine virtual camera object, I can right click and go into edit script. In doing so, it takes you to the sin machine code. So over here, you can see all of the source code that makes it work. Now, if it doesn't open this automatically, then you can manually find the script. Over here on the project window, you can scroll down and you've got the packages and you can click on the little arrow to expand them. Now, if you click on that and it doesn't show anything, then over here on the top right corner, you see this button with a little eye. If this one is toggled, then it hides the packages so you can't see anything. So make sure this one is untoggled. And now here we can see everything. So we can browse around, go inside Sin Machine, and then find the runtime, the core, and so on. So we can find it by manually looking into it. Or we can use the super useful search bar. So over here, let's search for Sin Machine Virtual Camera. And then here on the search, right now we don't see anything, but we can switch where we are searching. So instead of looking in the assets, let's look inside the packages. And if we select it, yep, there you go, here it shows up. So here we have the Sin Machine Virtual Camera, the script, which is located in here. And if you exit on the search, yep, over here it scrolls down to exactly where that script is. Okay, so double click to open it. Now here we can do a quick search for field of view, and nope, we don't find anything. Maybe search for FOV, and nope, also don't find it. Vertical FOV, nope, nothing like that. So we still can't find it. However, looking into the Sin Machine Virtual Camera Inspector, over here we can get a clue. We can see that the FOV field, this one exists inside a lens. So we've got the lens tab, and inside there we've got the FOV and so on. Now back in the script, if instead I search for a lens, and up over here I do find it. So the lens settings, and we have the lens field. Now we can look what this lens settings type contains, and again we can do the exact same thing. So over here we can manually find it over here on the packages, or use the search bar, look for lens settings, look in the packages, and here it is. And now here on the online settings, we can scroll down and yep, here we do find the field of view. So this is the method for how you can find any field in order to modify it through code. There's an even more advanced version of this method where you can load all of the packages source code directly over here into Visual Studio. So you can do it so that on the Solution Explorer over here, it identifies all of the various packages you have installed. Doing that makes it super easy to find exactly where it is the film that you want to change and makes it super easy to browse the entire package source code. In my Ultimate Unity Overview course, one of the lectures is exactly on this topic, how to find any class or any field to modify any of the many tools that Unity has. Another example would be the post-processing effect. So how do you modify, for example, just the volume intensity? So that's one of the things that you can do with this method that I covered in that lecture. Also, that course teaches you how to use many of the tools and features that Unity has. So check it out with the link in the description. Okay, so back to this tutorial. Now we know where the field of view exists, so now we can modify it. So over here, we access the Sin Machine Virtual Camera, then inside, let's access the lens, so the M underscore lens, and now we want to modify the field of view, so let's change it. And when we press, let's say, bring it down to 20. Okay, so let's test. So here we are, and the FOV is looking pretty normal. Now, as I press the button, yep, there you go, really nice, zoom in. All right, great. Now let's look at how to modify some other things. Over here, I have another scene, this one with a different camera type. I've got a nice top-down camera. 
And the way this works is I've got the Send Machine Virtual Camera, and over here I've set the Follow and the Unlock at Targets, and those are just an empty game object right in there. So the way the camera is set up, over here on the body, set up as a transposer, and it's looking at the object with a Follow Offset, so 20 on the Y and minus 20 on the Z. So the object it's looking at is over there, and the camera is over there, up there. By the way, if you want a complete camera controller tutorial, check out my other video on it. In there, I built a fully functioning complete camera controller, perfect for any game where you want the player to control the camera. So with this camera, like I said, I'm using a transposer, and let's say that I want to modify over here the follow offset. So instead of 20, when I press a button, I want to change this to some smaller value. And again, if over here in the code, if I try searching for it, so try looking for the follow offset, nope, I cannot find anything. So again, we're going to need to use that method to look in the package source code to figure out what to change. So on the Sin Machine Virtual Camera over here on this script, let's see how it works. And if we browse through this code, we can see that it works based on a component system. Over here we can see it has something called a Sin Machine Component Base, and it contains an array, so these are all of the components. And then we've got a really useful function, so we can call get Sin Machine Component and pass in the type where the type extends Sin Machine Component Base. Then if we search in the scripts, we can actually find the type that we want. So let's search for transposer. And up here we do find the send machine transposer. And let's click on the X to see where it exists in the file. Yep, here it is. So inside the components, here we have the third person follow, basic multi-channel Perlin, composer, framing, and so on. So if you look in the virtual camera over here on the body, those are exactly these types. So each one of these types has a different script. And same thing for the aim, each of these has a different script. So the one that we want is the send machine transposer. This is the one that we're using here. So let's open this one. And over here, now if we search for the follow offset, yep, here it is, we do find a vector three for the M follow offset. So now we know how to modify this, so let's go back into our original script. And first of all, we need to get the sin machine component of that type. So let's call the function get sin machine component, and the type that we want is a sin machine transposer. And then on this type, now we can modify the follow offset. So let's modify it to something. Like I said, let's bring it down a bit. So maybe just three F and keep minus 20 on the Z. Okay, so let's test. So here we are looking top down, press a button, and there you go, the camera goes all the way down. So everything worked. We pressed the button and we modified the field in the scene machine virtual camera. All right, awesome. So this is how you can modify any field in a scene machine virtual camera through code. If you're looking for a complete camera system, check out my video on it. Another thing related to scene machine is if you want to manually handle screen shake to modify the shake intensity, I also have a video on that. And something similar to this is how to modify effects in post-processing. It's very similar. It's also component-based. And again, I covered it in another video. So if you want to learn how to modify effects through code during runtime, go watch that one. And finally, like I said, this method that I showed here is one of the things that I teach in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. In there, I teach this method for how to modify any field in any package or Unity tool, and also another method for how you can load the package source code directly into Visual Studio. And on top of that, the course has over 15 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine. So if you want to learn more about how to better use Unity, check it out. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.